Let's compute the interior angles in this five-sided closed polygon. You can see there are azimuths listed for each side. In this figure, north is at the top of the image, and we need to talk a little bit to review how azimuths work. By now, you probably know that zero degrees azimuth is north. 90 degrees azimuth is east, south has an azimuth of 180 degrees, west is at 270, and the alternative name for north is also 360 degrees. As you progress around the compass from north through east, south, west, and then back to north, that angles advance, they add up. That is, there is an additive operation going on. Now, if we go the opposite direction, then we would be subtracting angles. Stated another way, a clockwise operation is an addition operation. We call this clockwise. A counterclockwise operation is negative. If I need to know the angle between 180 degrees and 90 degrees, you know that you will simply subtract 90 from 180. But let's also look at this from a spatial component. Let's imagine that you are standing here at the center of this axis pair, and you are looking outward so that you see the line representing 180 on your right side and 90 is at your left. What you will then be doing is subtracting, performing an operation that moves from right to left. Well, what we saw a little bit ago was that an operation that is counterclockwise is a negative operation. We are going to subtract from 180, we will subtract 90. We said 180, which is on the right, minus 90, which is on the left, gives us the interior angle, 90 degrees. Let's apply this concept now to the interior angles of this five-sided figure. Let's, for instance, use point F as our starting point. So I want you to imagine that you are standing at point F and you are looking toward the inside of this polygon. So when you're standing at point F, this traverse leg, line FK, is on your right and line FG is on your left. We said we're going to use the direction on the right and we're going to subtract the direction on the left. Therefore, we will compute this angle right here. Line KF has an azimuth of 119 degrees, 2 minutes and 54 seconds. That is in the southeast quadrant. Consider this. If this is north and this line is east and west, then that line KF heads off in this direction. East has an azimuth of 90, south has an azimuth of 180, and 1190254 is between those. So we're definitely in the southeast quadrant. This line is expressed going to the southeast. Therefore, let's reverse its direction. The way we reverse the direction is by computing the back azimuth. So the back azimuth of this is merely going to be 299 degrees. How did we get that? We simply added 180 to 119. The minutes and the seconds will stay the same. So now I can do the math. We can see we have 299 degrees, 2 minutes, 54 seconds, and I'm going to subtract 184, 33, 54. You see the direction from F to G is expressed as 184. That is going generally in the southerly direction, isn't it? 
we know that that azimuth is appropriately oriented for this line. So when we compute this difference, we will get 114, 29, 0, 0. At K, if I face inward to the center of the polygon, then J is on my right and F is on my left. I have to look at each line and decide, is it expressed pointing away from me? Are these indeed pointing away from me? Well. Going from K to F, we said just a moment ago that 119 points in the southeasterly direction. 68 here po uh, points in the northeasterly direction, but as this is drawn, J is southwest. So in order to make this consistent with our perspective from K, we have to compute the back azimuth of 683939 39, and it will instead be 248 3939. 39. So I'll do the math. I'll have 248 3939, 39, and I will subtract 119 0254. Notice 248.39.39 is the direction on the right relative to point K and 119.02.54 is on the left side of point K when we're facing the interior angle. So my result here will be 129.39.39. 45. That is the angle here at point K. 1, 2, 9, 3, 6, 4, 5. Now when we stand at J and face the interior angle, point H is on the right. Point K is on our left. Well, when K is to the northeast of J, then the azimuth should be between 0 and 90, and this one is. When H is to the southeast of J, then the azimuth from J to K should be between 90 and 180. It's in the southeast quadrant. In this case, it's the opposite. So we're going to compute the back azimuth. So 336, 1524 minus 180 will give me 156, won't it? 156, 1524. The minutes and the seconds don't change when I add or subtract 180. I'm going to take the angle on the right and subtract the angle on the left. Right minus left. 156, 15, 24, minus 68, 39, 39. And my result will be 87, 35, 45. That now is the interior angle at J. When I'm standing at H and I'm looking at the interior angle, then G is on my right, J is on my left. Looking toward J, I am looking in the northwesterly direction and this azimuth, 336.15.24, is appropriate 
in the northwest quadrant. The azimuth 249.28.46 that I see here going toward G is expressed in the opposite direction. So the back azimuth of 249 will be 69 and the minutes and seconds stay the same. I'm going to take the direction on the right and I'm going to subtract the direction on the left but you may already see how we will have a, a small issue here. 69, 28, 46, minus 3, 3, 6, 15, 24 will clearly give us a negative number, won't it? So my result will be negative 266, 46, 38. Well, you know that an acceptable azimuth falls in the range 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So to fix this, I simply add 360 degrees. And the result turns out to be 93 degrees, 13 minutes, and 22 seconds. That is the angle between here and here. Now, if you look at this, this, this makes more sense than negative 266, 46, 38. In fact, 266, 46, 38 is the exterior angle here, isn't it? 93, 13, 22 is the interior angle. As we stand at G and look toward the interior angle, F is on the right, H is on the left. The direction going from G to F should be in the northeast quadrant, thus it should be between 0 and 90. Here it's 180, indicating that it is in the southwest quadrant. So to put it back in the northeast quadrant, we will subtract 180 and we get 4 degrees, 33 minutes, 54 seconds. The direction from G to H uh, should be in the southwest quadrant, and indeed the number 249, 28, 46 is consistent with that. So that azimuth can be left alone. So once again, we will subtract from the direction on the right the direction on the left. I now have 4 degrees, 33 minutes, 54 seconds. And just as before, I'm going to subtract a large value, which will yield a negative number. I get negative 244, 54, 52. Well, as before, we said we will fix this because there is no such thing as a negative azimuth. I will add 360 and my final result will be 115.05.08. In any series of computations it's possible to make a blunder. So we can check our work to ensure that we have not made a blunder. We will simply add these five interior angles and they should add up to a value that is very predictable. The sum of the interior angles for any closed polygon, the sum of the interior angles, you can see sigma stands for sum and I've got a symbol representing angles, is going to be n minus 2 times 180 degrees when n equals the number of sides of the polygon. Well here we have five sides so 5 minus 2 times 180 degrees equals 540 degrees. So if we have done this properly then the sum of our interior angles will come out to 540 degrees. If they don't, we have a math blunder somewhere and must go find it. Indeed, they all add up now to 540 degrees, so we know we have not made a blunder.
we have proven it to ourselves with an independent check by summing our interior angles.